Welcome back, everybody. We're picking up again on Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter. This is Rusty here. Uh, this is still the first part of the game, Pray Tell. Uh, last we saw, I was playing as a newspaper boy named Wiggins, having to trace down, chase down a cart. Here we go. I, there we go. I am back as Wiggins. All right, so what was I just looking at? There we go. Now on behalf of Sherlock Holmes, looks like I am getting ready to break and enter. Seems loud. Yeah, it seems about right. Well, I guess I don't have a I choice. I can't see what's inside. Well, of course not. It's too dangerous to enter. Well, then what am I doing here? Wow, a lot of expensive stuff. Ah, oh, coat of arms. It might help Mr. Holmes. I'll make a drawing of it. Is that it? Alright, time to walk back out on the street. Can I peek through, see what's on the other side. Hopefully nothing. What am I supposed to be doing here? Alright. It's too dangerous to enter. Well, then don't. Locked. Is that all I was doing? I can't leave yet. I'm not finished here. Well, all right. We peek in the window some more. Anything else? Bunch of hoity toity rich person stuff. Wow, a lot of expensive stuff. So, can't go there. You know, I should be able to climb that ladder, jump onto that trellis, pull myself through. I can't see what's inside. I know. And then go in one of those it's windows. Too dangerous up there. to enter. There's more windows. How do I get to them? I can't see what's inside. Well, of course not. You gotta climb over. I can't see what's inside. Do only two people live here? I wish one was me. Bags of food. I like this ass. 
Time to report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before I get caught. It's gonna be a policeman right there. Kid is lucky. I really expected there to be a policeman right out there waiting for me. Wiggins' tale was quite unusual. What do you make of what he found, Holmes? That's a pretty good drawing, actually. Wiggins did a good job. Examine the item brought by Wiggins. Search archives. Examine the item brought by Wiggins. Holmes, we need to help poor Tom. Hmm. Holy cow. So we got history. Research. Marks and symbols. The royal potato cans. English coat of arms. There we go, the coat of arms of the Marsh family. Oh, uh, let me get a piece of paper. While I write this down on a sticky note. So the Marsh family. Nowadays, the representative of this family is Lord Edward Marsh, the well-known benefactor. He provides the poor people of Whitechapel with provisions, warm clothes, etc. Lord Marsh is also renowned as a co-founder of the Special Education Program, which allows poor people the opportunity of an education. Lord Marsh resides at 3 Mainsbury Road, London. Here it is. That was pretty straightforward. So this man could be Lord Marsh. Huh. A lord who hangs around in a public house. Let's pay a visit to Lord Marsh. We'll pretend that we're interested in his charitable activities. Hmm. Sounds good. Mr. Holmes, you have a visitor. Oh, just ask him to wait. I'm afraid that won't be possible. This young lady refuses to wait for anything. What? Father! Caitlin! <laughs> Miss Caitlin's boarding school was flooded. Everyone was sent home. As if it could smell any mustier. <laughs> My word, how is it possible that you have grown up so fast? You'll be staying. Wherever will we put you? Holmes, I'll give her my room, of course. What do you have to say, Kate? You're on a new case. A respectable lady who's being blackmailed? Or is it a love story between a prince and a suffragist? However did you guess? You will tell me, won't you, Father? Only if our lives are in danger. All right, then. Have fun. I'll go and unpack. Will you help me, Mrs. Hudson? It's wonderful to have Kate home. All right, pay a visit to Lord Marsh. Holmes, about Caitlin. Yes? She has grown up, hasn't she? Don't you think it's time to... to tell her? To tell her what, Watson? Well, about her father. Never. Absolutely never. Do you hear me? Holmes, you were responsible for the death of her father. You owe her the truth. She is old enough now. I would lose her. Can't you see that? She must never know. Watson, is that clear? Holmes. It won't and can't happen. Well, lying to her is not a good way to keep her.
Uh, come in, please. Hey, Lord Marsh. I heard you had something shifty going on. This is Sherlock Holmes paying a house call. Uh, good day, gentlemen. Welcome to my home. How may I help you? Good day to you, Lord Marsh. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Well, let's figure this out with no medical background. I'm going with feels unwell. Yeah, why not? Whoa, I can just get him too. Let's do one at a time. Man of wealth. Let's say he is ill. Strong painkiller. Notebook. Something of health. It's higher. I don't think that's a cooking recipe. And order a camp. There we go. His temperature was higher than usual. He was experiencing tightness in the chest, shortness of breath during the day, daily dose of pain kills. Guy's probably having a heart attack. Member of a hunting club. Anything else this bridge doctor can tell me? Oh yeah, he's a physician. Character portrait complete. Oh, good. Reuben Fisher is a young man of 25 and already a confident physician. He is well educated, mannered, and a member of a hunting club. His clothes indicate that he is financially wealthy. Reuben Fisher is not only a physician, he is also Lord Marsh's personal assistant. Lord Marsh. Lord Marsh is a wealthy man who holds a high position in society indicated by his expensive clothes and valuable gold ring. He, is, he has dedicated his life to helping the poor. He is ill, therefore he is covered with a blanket despite the fact that it is quite warm inside the room. See, imprecise, low precision on those two. Alright. Open package of powerful painkillers. I hope we're not disturbing you. You are with your physician? Yes, this is Dr. Reuben Fisher. But no, please, I'm intrigued by your visit, Mr. Holmes. I'm glad to hear it. The last thing I'd wish is to upset the patient. Lord Marsh, can I just say that I admire all of your efforts in assisting the poor of London? Ah, uh, yes. It is a war that we must fight on our streets and now, too, from my home. You must surely have noticed those bags full of items, clothing, and books for the unfortunate. That is inspirational. Um, at my own humble level, I too try my best to support <laughs> those in need. I thought perhaps that I could be of some assistance? I don't see why not. I already have the valuable assistance of Dr. Fisher, who happens to be my personal physician. Forgive me, Lord Marsh. You're looking very pale. Might I offer Dr. Watson's assistance? That is kind of you, but I feel confident that I can provide Lord Marsh with the care that he requires. How long have you been like this, my lord? I'm fine, Dr. Watson. Don't fuss. It's only influenza. I'll be better in a few days. I can feel it already. In that case, why are you taking such powerful painkillers? Excuse me, what do you mean? Mr. Holmes is referring to the pills on your table. I'm sorry, but that's a medical confidentiality. It's curious. Your face seems familiar to me, Doctor. Oddly, I'm associating it with Whitechapel? Well done. You are right. I do occasionally frequent a few hostelries over there, would you believe it? 
<laughs> Not that I am a drinker. That's the mutton chop man. Dressed as a working man, I can approach the other fellows to see if they might be interested in a special job. A special job? May I ask what you're referring to? Certainly. Since Lord Marsh began his special education program in 1889, he foresaw that such people would need an occupation of some kind. And so, with or without education, we propose these opportunities to work with Lord Marsh. It offers the less fortunate a chance to help make London a better place. That's remarkable. Yes, indeed. In order to truly see, one requires vision, yes? But also insight. And Lord Marsh has believed this since he was a child. Oh, oh, Dr. Fisher makes it all sound so romantic. Let's close this topic. Hmm. Our quarter main club to celebrate our horseback riding, exploration, and hunting. Well, that ain't too bad. Last year, three orphans were put through medical college. Thanks to Lord Marsh and the special education program, a great many. Po Thanks to Lord Marsh and the special education program, a great many poor people will have a second chance in life. Dear Lord Marsh, here is the list of select participants for the special education program in October. It looks to be a very promising event. I'm looking forward to it. Patrick Tanner, Thomas Kelly, John Strobridge, William Thatcher, Reginald Staple. Am I supposed to know any of these? Got a underline one? I've never heard of this man. John Strobridge. I've seen this name before. It was on a missing persons poster. Hmm. It appears that Lord Marsh spent a great deal of his money on aiding the poor. Well, don't mind me as I just rifle through your house and belongings. Let's go insult the poor doctor Lord a little Marsh bit. Lord Marsh believes that he can help all these poor people. Is there something else that interests you? Oh, don't worry. Lord Marsh even helps hospitals. Don't worry, I'm sure I'll find something. I'm intrigued by the special education program. It's a big house. I'll find something. Humanitarian aid for an orphanage. Aid for the paupers of Lambeth Workhouse. Bags full of food. Ho oh, ho, I can't go upstairs, can I? Locked. Oh, that's kind of weird. Oh, there's the door. Never mind. I was going to say, there's one room there and there's a window on the other side I couldn't see. And that entire side of the house is just blocked off. With the windows shuttered. What's over there? Supposed to be pay a visit to Lord Marsh. Last year, three or Lord Marsh hunting with his friends. Ah, my dear comrades, Lord Collins and Lord Harrington. If it wasn't for this godforsaken English malady, I'd be with those rapscallions right now. All in due time, my lord. There we go. So I had a triple click on it. Quite work it out. Do you have any ideas to the number of people who might owe you their lives? Oh, don't embarrass me, Mr. Holmes. But indeed, these people have become like a family to me. That would be a fairly large family, I imagine. 
<laughs> yes, the, the list would be longer than any of your short stories. As for how large, well, Fisher is the one who keeps record. Might we take a glance at the list? I regret that is impossible. It is confidential. I stand firm upon that point, Mr. Holmes. I quite understand. We'll most certainly send a donation towards your educational program. I shall take my leave then. I thank you both and I wish you all the very best, gentlemen. Likewise, Mr. Holmes. See where we go from here. In 1889, Lord Marsh co founded the special education program for the lower classes. It could be that George Hurst mentioned something about this to his son Tom. So, we gotta go back and talk to Tom again? Is there something else? Anything else? Lord Marsh believes that he can help. I'm intrigued by this. Yeah. There we go. Hmm. Let's go talk to the kid. <laughs> so this is North Street. There's the tavern. Let's talk to the kid. Kid, you still here? Oh, kid got some whiskey? Mr. Holmes, do you have any news about my father? Tom, Tom, not so fast. I wanted to ask you if you remember your father mentioning anything about a special education program. An education program? No, he only talked about a special job. What's this box, Tom? Oh yeah, I just found it, Mr. Holmes. It was ever so well hidden. I've no idea why. Well done, my boy. It could prove very helpful. All right, what's in the box? Sewing this machine oil, oil can also be used on weapons. Yeah, it can be used a on ramrod, weapons. Clean a rifle. Jesus pressed Wolfjack. Wolfjack looks like a military badge. Tom, does your father own a rifle? A rifle? No. If he had, he would have shown it me. <laughs> I'm sure that he wouldn't have shown it you. I need to find this rifle. Oh, probably in the bucket. It's a cleaning cloth. This scrap of cloth was used to oil a firearm. Tom, does your father have any other property? No. Well, at least I don't think so. I have to take Toby. He'll take a sniff of the oil, and we'll find that rifle. Alright, so am I going to go get old Toby? I guess maybe it's young Toby. He was found. All right. Uh, I think we can just jump straight there. All right, Toby. You want to come try to? Come on, Toby. It's time for you to earn your keep. You want to come try to sniff out oil and grease in 1889? London? Yeah, I What's know it? you're excited. I prefer to visit Lord Marsh. I'm worried about the condition of his health. 
Yeah, you probably should. I think somebody's trying to kill you or kill him. I prefer to visit Lord Marsh. I'm worried about the condition of his health. All right. So, you go back to the Hearst house. All right, Toby. Search, Toby. Search. Oh. Yeah. Open that door, Toby. Good job, Toby. Fetches that lady with the newspaper. Or the father was drunk. Bitch is probably going to go to that tool shed. Unless I have to get multiple things. I figured it would have gone to that tool shed. Good job, Toby. That's what the key was for. Oh, yeah. Jail cells. No wonder I was getting shot at in the intro. People use this cellar for storage. Nothing that could interest me. You know, the way he's talking, it seems like cellars like this were just a common thing. A pile of rubbish. Not here. Old things. Guessing I'll know it when I see Ordinary it. Ordinary storage. Oh, there we go. Creepy at all. Tom's photograph. Let's try to get inside. Maybe that key'll work. Use correct lock picks to lift the lock plates and create an unobstructed path for the warden pin. Say what? Do the lock picks go into? Okay, this makes a lot more sense. Oh man. Just rubbish. Yeah, it's just rubbish. That is a weird uh lockpick thing. Manor 
cottage. A map of Epping Forest. Epping Forest. All but two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 18 rounds missing. Letter from friend. Dear George, I do understand you, and it's so sad. Same as you, I can't find a job. Not even the smallest thing. My children, children have nothing to eat. When I try to find anything, the bosses just say that they don't want wounded people working for them. Our military service means nothing. Our country used us in war, but now it has abandoned us. Nobody cares. Your friend, Jack. All right. Order. By Her Royal Majesty Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom, Great Britain, and Ireland, I, Frederick Russell Burnham, Major of the British Army, declare, the country extends its gratitude to George Hurst, an honorable soldier of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, for his valiant military service. The British Army hereby awards him the Distinguished Conduct Medal and retires him due to the injuries sustained while on duty. Major Frederick Russell Burnham. So, he was injured and now can't find a job. Is that a 3... 303? 303? 303, Savage. Okay. This case must have been full of cartridges. Only two left. There was something on the stand. Probably a rifle. On that rifle stand. Farewell letter. Dear Tom, if you're reading this letter, then it means that I'm dead. I'm so sorry that things had to end up this way, but I had no other choice, and you know that. And, sorry, no other choice. You have to know that. You are a very smart boy, and I'm so proud of you. I hope one day you'll understand and you'll forgive me. Son, I love you so much. Don't despair. Try to be happy. For you'll grow up to be a man someday. And sooner than you think. You won't be alone. Me and your man will be looking over you from heaven. Your loving father. Well, that's kind of sad. News on lords in the education program. Why are they here? Newspaper article, Lord Marsh, in association with his friends Lord Harrington and Lord Collins, is the co-founder of the Special Education Program. In assisting the poor to build better lives and more certain futures, these three gentlemen surely help lift the level of our struggling society. Let's compare this list with the evidence that we found earlier. This is the list of selected participants for October's Special Education Program. According to this poster, John Strowbridge is missing. Let's compare them with people from Hearst documents. <laughs> so, Thomas Kelly. This man appears in both documents. So, Staple, Thatcher, Tanner. Staple. What do we got? Tanner. Assuming there should be a Thatcher in here too. John Strowbridge. Hmm. All the people in Marsh's document are marked and dated in George Hurst's files. George Hurst's list. Oh, that's never a good thing. Well.
else we got? Anything? Imagination talent helps you to visualize objects and events. Useful in limited situations. There was a rifle here. George Hurst took it with him. Yep. Alright, what do we got next? Investigate the disappearance. Just some old things. Find a pair of related clues and they will form a deduction. Red color signifies an unachievable clue combination. So, farewell letter. Oh, this. Oh, okay. George Hurst knew no return. George Hurst knew that he stood no j chance of returning from his special job. Therefore, he wrote a farewell letter to Tom. Last chance. George Hurst wrote a farewell letter, but he didn't give it to Tom. There's a chance he is still alive. I would have to say that one. Is that right? What else we got? Hopper's list. Violence. George Hurst's special job is undoubtedly associated with violence if he took his rifle with him. What else we got? Sneak into Marsh House. Sneak into Lord Marsh's house and uncover additional information about the special education. All right. Sneak in, we shall go. Maybe we can get Wiggins to do it. Wiggins seemed f fairly reliable. Well, actually, for like a ten-year-old, I think he seemed very brave, reliable. Toby best nose in the British Empire. Alright, so I think I am going to sneak into Lord Marsh's house and I'm going to cut this one right here. Uh, please come back next time and we will see what we can find in Lord Marsh's house. Take it easy everybody. Later.